Mr. Speaker, community members and uh, local doctors in Fort Chippewan have been raising their concerns for almost a decade about the high rates of cancer that uh, erupted after oil production began near the Athabasca River. Their concerns were not taken seriously, and only now, amid protests on the steps of the legislature, does the government realize this is not a problem they can continue to brush under the carpet. To the Premier, since uh, there is a need to conduct a new investigation, does the Premier believe that the findings of the original investigation conducted in 2005 were inadequate and superficial? Today's government campaigns the oil over the environment, profits for foreign companies over the health of its own citizens. If the Athabasca River flowed south instead of north, and the toxins and poisons of these billions of dollars land destroyers flowed south towards the mainstream Alberta population, Imagine if their graveyards were filling with the dead, harmed by oil-related diseases. Well, Mr. Speaker, the truth is the last month has seen many major oil spills in Canada. Quarter million liter oil spill near Elk Point. A half million liter spill into the Red Deer River threatening the water supply. Nearly a million liters in northern Alberta. And the Conservative response has been to cut corners on reviewing the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Yay. Now, BCers and all Canadians want strong rules that protect public health and the environment. And the NDP agrees with them. Yeah. So will Conservatives now now listen to reason, listen to Canadians, and stop gutting environmental protection rules. There's not a tremendous amount of opportunity to, to create an enormous environmental problem. And in the mining operation, um, we're, we're, we're hauling dirt around is, is what we're doing. I mean, at, at its core, that's, that's most of what we do. Last Monday, 500 birds landed on a toxic tailings pond near Fort McMurray, and fewer than five came out alive. The same day, the minister was writing on his website that, and I quote, Alberta is proving to the world that you can produce energy in an environmentally responsible manner. Are not uh, a, a very environmentally sensitive people. Change landscapes. We dam rivers, we cut down forests, and now we're uh, digging up uh, a forest for, for the tar sands. In Alberta, I think the uh, situation is more like what the uh, situation was in Alaska prior to the Exxon Valdez, where this was seen as a, a pretty much uh, huge economic boon uh, to the economy with uh, very little downside. Prince William Sound, Alaska, a corner of the earth that couldn't possibly be wounded by an oil spill, or so we were told, but then 20 years ago, the ugly truth spilled out across the water when the tanker Exxon Valdez hit a well-known reef and spewed 11 million gallons of crude oil. Cleanup crews arrived too late to stop this spill from spreading out and killing off the wild things that failed to see it coming. Otters, eagles, harbor seals, a quarter of a million seabirds, salmon that sustained local fishing towns, at least 20 orcas. Eventually, this oil oozed over 1,300 miles worth of rocky shoreline, where some of it remains today. This is the stuff that spewed from the hold of the tanker 20 years ago. So take a closer look at it and think about the move to plant new oil rigs and pipelines in Alaska's coastal waters and to the north in the furthest reaches of the Arctic, places where we now catch much of our seafood places where the underwater hazards may not be charted on the maps. I strongly suspect that the uh, environmental downside will come to light and that it will ultimately put the uh, Exxon Valdez to shame in terms of scale once uh, the full impact of the tar sands development becomes known. I think if many Albertans who are benefiting financially from the oil sands development were to fly over that area, even people who've been desensitized by urban life cannot help but be impressed by the absolute devastation of the boreal forest and, and ultimately of water courses and uh, just the ecosystems. We just 
just passed some of the more devastating stuff that I've ever seen. Um, I've, this is the second time doing it, and it's, uh, I thought I could handle it this time, but there was a point there where I had to, uh, I had to not look at anybody because um, I couldn't actually take it emotionally. Thinking of writing off these huge areas of landscape, uh, I've seen recent uh, comparisons that put the amount of country that will be damaged as uh, equivalent to the size of the state of Florida. You could imagine what the U.S. Uh, uh, reaction would be if a foreign power were to come in and say, incidentally, we're going to destroy Florida. Coastal British Columbia, virgin rainforests, wild fish, wild places. This is what the world is looking at. There's nothing like living this type of lifestyle that, that we've had for thousands of years. We have fresh air, we have fresh water. We're a rich people. We're rich from the bounty of the sea. It's a place of roaming wild wolves, majestic grizzlies and mythical spirit bears, wild salmon, orca, and one of the ocean's most magnificent creatures, humpback whales, which have miraculously returned to this coast in record numbers over the past decade. But these whales, fish and wildlife, and the indigenous and coastal communities that depend on them now find their very survival threatened by a proposal from energy giant Enbridge to bring an oil pipeline and super tankers to these fragile and dangerous coastal waters. The plan is to pump over half a million barrels a day of unrefined bitumen from the Alberta tar sands over the Rocky Mountains and across the heartland of BC to the port of Kitimat. From there, some of the world's largest oil tankers would set sail along BC's rugged coast through the Great Bear Rainforest on their way to China and the United States. Dubbed the Northern Gateway Pipeline, the 1,100-kilometer, $6 billion project is of concern to opponents for three main reasons. One, the risks from the pipeline itself, which would cross over a thousand rivers and streams. Two, the dangers of introducing oil supertankers for the first time to this part of the wild BC coast. And three, the fact the project would facilitate the rapid expansion of the tar sands, hooking emerging Asian economies on the world's dirtiest oil. <laughs> 